<laughs> hi there. So hi, Suzanne. I'm here today with Suzanne Frazier, whose new show is up at Dart Gallery. And we are going to just talk about that and a little bit about Suzanne's practice as an artist. Welcome, Suzanne. Well, thank you. Yes, uh, Paula Peacock and I are having two solo exhibitions at Dart Gallery on December 6, 2020. And the show is called Shift in Perception. And then each of us have um, our own titles to our shows. Paula Peacock's is Altered Soul. And the title of my exhibition is Spirit Light. Wonderful. It's a beautiful show. So uh, tell, tell us, when did you first know that you were an artist? <laughs> oh, this is a typical artist answer. I've always been an artist. <laughs> I mean, in first grade, I drew pictures of flowers and ducks on the top of my homework paper. And in the sixth grade, I was declared a, a gifted artist. And the, I was sent to special art classes, but the art teacher drew on my pictures. And so I quit. I couldn't handle it. And then when I went to college, I wanted to take art classes and my father wouldn't pay for them. So I became a philosophy major instead of an art major. Go figure. I don't, he thought I would make more money being a philosopher. Um, but then I worked for 10 years in um, radio and for Frontier Airlines. And then I kind of said, I've saved a lot, enough money. I'm going to art school. So at the age of 40, I went one year to Denver University. And then I transferred to the University of Colorado in Boulder in, in 89, 1989. I got my BFA in studio art. And so I am a fine example of you don't have to start at the beginning of your life, even though I did make a lot of art, um, being an artist until you're in your later years. And um, so I have been teaching and making art, showing work since 1990. And um, the rest is history. <laughs> Great. I love that story of finding art later or committing to art later in life. And um, I've, I'm always curious, when, when did you, I mean, you answered when you committed, when you were 40 and you went back for a degree, but what was it that caused that to happen? You know, the whole time I worked in, in, the two very strenuous industries, I would get kind of tired and mad and I'd say, I'm going to quit this job and go to art school. It was just in my cells. It was in my bones. And if my father had paid for my art classes in college, I probably would have been an artist from that point on. Mm -hmm. um, all my friends in college were the art students. So it just, I always gravitated towards art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. I can relate to that one, actually, um, as I'm sure other people can. So I'm curious about your process and your approach to painting. Um, where do you get your inspiration? And what's your process like uh, that, that goes about translating that inspiration? Well, you know, I wrote a book called Contemplative Art, and it's on a on the blurb website you can buy it um and um it was very interesting after about 10 years of making art people kept saying to me well what kind of artist are you and i couldn't say anymore i was a beginning artist because i'd been making art for 10 years so i really had to sit down and think about it and my process is a contemplative one i mean i i meditate before i make my art and I'm painting from that contemplative space. And during, it took me about five years to come, become comfortable with that label. And then I looked for a definition of contemplative art and I couldn't find one. So I created my own and I'd like to share it with everyone. So for me, contemplative art 
is a product of creative expression arising from the pure joy of creating grounded in a meditative connection to the radiance and perfection of spirit known only through one's experience of being fully human it's a lot of words i know but it's kind of like you have to be a human being first and then you find whatever spiritual practice works for you and you find the radiance and perfection of the world around us and then from that point of view you create your art from the pure joy of creating and the final part of the process is the product, <laughs> the, the final painting. It's not the beginning of the process, it's the end or the finale of, of finishing a piece of work. And, and so I, it's kind of upside down in my life. And so my inspiration comes from my meditation time and um, the current series, Spirit Light, comes from my 48 years of living in Colorado and getting up and looking at the sunrise every morning or the sunset every afternoon. And, you know, the colors and the diversity of, of what appears every morning. I mean, no two sunsets look alike. They're unique and beautiful in their own way. And that was my inspiration for that series. Mm, beautiful. And I've lived in Denver, I've lived in Boulder, I lived in Creststone up in the San Luis Valley. And so the, the paintings in the exhibition reflect all, all those locations, as well as just looking out on the plains and, and seeing the sunrise from, you know, the flatness of the earth. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, wonderful. There's such warmth and richness in the in the colors and in the yeah in the in the pieces so thank you thank you well color is a important component of my work and i um, always try to make unique colors that can never be created again so that's an aspect and then i apply either heavy texture or light texture with palette knife but i mostly paint with a palette knife now i I love it. Fantastic. Thank you for uh, sharing that with us. Is there anything uh, before we wrap up that you want to share with um, viewers? Anything you want to pass on to viewers that they should look out for? Well, I would just encourage everyone to, to um, create. Mm -hmm. And if you create from the center of your beingness, you can never be wrong. People cannot criticize you. So just paint from who you are in the center of your being or make art or cook from that place or garden from that place. And it's just so fulfilling. Suzanne Frazier, thank you so much. Wish you all the best with the show. Thank you.